I'm on an active airfield. Um, in fact, I'm flying out from here shortly, so I'm gonna put airplane mode on my phone. It's the wise thing to do. Where am I? I'm in Croatia. Why am I in Croatia? I'm here to drive a car that's been in development for almost 10 years. And it is probably the most uh, technologically ambitious, most powerful car that anyone can really believe. And it's been set up by a charismatic guy who set the company up in his early 20s. He's only just over 30 now. And underneath this cover is the 2 million euro 1900 horsepower, 340 mile range, 258 mile an hour, under two second to 60 car called the C2. So I'm gonna do some acceleration tests in the car, then I'm gonna do a road drive, but I'm also gonna to get to meet Marta, who's a wonderful guy, and this is his brainchild, this is his obsession. I'm Johnny Smith, welcome to The Late Break Show. Marte, come on in. He's just hanging around on an airfield, casual. It's so good to see you. Uh, we've been in touch for a few years about this, but finally, I know you said this is not a finished car, but it's that far away from finished. It's a pre-series car, which is 90% there to a customer car. So hang on, we, we, we picked a windy day to do this. It's got a name, it's not a C2. It's not a C2 anymore, this is the Nevera. And what we are experiencing today is actually a Nevera, which is a Mediterranean storm that comes unexpectedly and suddenly with lightning and rain. It's a Croatian thing okay. uh, of the Croatian Mediterranean coast. Yeah. This is a Croatian electric hypercar. So both are loaded with electricity and both are very energetic and powerful. And we thought this is the right name for the car. The Nevera. So hopefully we won't have a full electrical storm today. Yeah. This is the most powerful production car. Regardless if electric or hybrid. And it's, it's a proper production car, meaning uh, global homologation, which is very different from doing like a single type approval or something like that. Yeah. And, and maybe something, uh, the specs that you said, that's what we have confirmed with the car. And it's actually better than what we unveiled three years ago. So we set the bar very high. Yeah. And despite setting the bar very high, we jumped over it. <laughs> And it's, that's just the performance, you know, this is not a one-trick pony. We wanted the car to be comfortable, yeah. usable, easy to get in and out, lots of space inside, lots of features like 13 cameras, autonomous driving capability. It has the biggest battery of any production car, 120 kilowatt hours. Wow. It has a 360 camera, you know, a parking assistance system and stuff like that. Other hypercars don't have that. Yeah. You know, connectivity, over-the-air updates. It's ticking so many boxes. Yeah, that's yeah. what made it so complicated and difficult to do this, and doing it in Croatia where there is no car industry, no experience, and stuff like that. So <laughs> this was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears right here in Carbon. <laughs> it is amazing. It is amazing. It's just the numbers, if nothing else. Even if you, even if you're not someone that appreciates cars that look like this, it's the numbers. The numbers of this car are just mind blowing. 1.4 megawatts of power. It's a bloody power station that's got loads of carbon fiber around it. I think I'm gonna have a word with your test driver development guy. Yeah. Um, he'll talk me through the controls. Let's do that. Yeah, so it's, it's quite straightforward. It's, it's really easy. So basically you have your um, knobs that are the main thing. So yep. this is your uh, drive knob where you choose your uh, parking reverse neutral drive. Yeah. Uh, and you're engaging the powertrain and disengaging the powertrain. Uh, this is your um, basically uh, modes, the driving modes that you choose your um, uh, range, cruise, yeah. sport, track, drift, and of course mode one or mode two that are... Um, like a personalization yeah, settings. Yeah. yeah. So um, the, the basics of it, and of course this is the uh, powertrain distribution of which uh, allows you to change the uh, amount of torque that you, are, you will be delivering to the front or the, or the rear. Right. So this is your front motors and this is your rear motors. Oh, is it? Okay, okay. So okay. In all modes you have torque vectoring on, 
and you can also on this mode, so on this knob you can switch the torque vectoring off, the stability off, you can switch the, the traction control off, or you can have fall off, which is... Off off. Off off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm probably not going to do that. Launch control is, is enabled in all the modes. Is it? Yeah. Even in comfort mode? Wherever you want. You just <laughs> press the, 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 the brake, press, press the brake all the way, press the throttle all the way. Yeah. Launch control activates, you know, lift off the brake and... So like a Porsche? Yeah. And the you, torque vector. You don't have to warm up the tires. You don't have to warm up the brakes. You don't have to warm up the engine. So you just, you jump in the car and go. Launch control straight away if you want it. Yes. And traction <laughs> control learns the, the track as, as you go on. Gosh. So it gets the, the maximum from the grips. And drift mode's definitely not for the road. Yes. Of course, <laughs> you have to drift responsibly. Yes. I've seen the way you drive, you drive quite hard. So although you do have official test drivers, you're one of those as well inadvertently, because if, if you, you're quite hard on the car. Absolutely. You're quite hard on the controls, because you're always trying to find a weak spot. Yeah, so everybody knows when they think it's ready, I come to drive the car and there's a list of 30 more things to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think actually, you today here on this surface, which is much better this than is... our uh, usual track where we test, yeah. you'll probably have a much better time than, than we had. So you'll probably now break the production car record um, with your run. Just super casual, just break the production <laughs> car run. Ready for launch. Ready. <laughs> Here is gravel and whooshing by some sort of mad synth. That is so, so devastatingly quick. And that's the thing, there's, there's only one facet that the Navera is capable of. This is not just a point and shoot car. The whole concept of it is that it, it does a bit of everything. It can be a GT car, uh, 340 miles range, WLTP. It can be an unbelievable hypercar. Yes, it can do that. It can also be comfortable. It can drive autonomously. It, it can do pretty much anything you want in the car world, but wrapped inside hypercar skin. When you're using the normal brakes up to 300 kilowatts of energy going back in to the battery packs and uh gosh it's the i mean this thing weighs over 2.1 tons this is not a light car electric fast cars can't really be light if they want any form of range and that's what the balancing act of the the, the rimac creation is it's it's trying to be so many things but trying to excel at them rather than being heavily compromised. Okay, Marte wants me to try drift mode. My word, what am I doing? Don't get me wrong, I'm used to driving cars and driving them relatively quickly and all that stuff, but I'm, you, I'm not a track expert, one. And two, um, I'm not a race driver. Uh, and, I, and I get the nerves. I don't get nervous in many cars these days. But I feel like I'm a little nervous in this. of no return and you've still <laughs> because of the because of the way that this thing works it just kind of pulls you out 
Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's really scrambled my innards. From this to the validation prototypes, again, every part, literally every part, like nothing remains unchanged. Like even the, the windows or, or, I don't know, the interior parts, the suspension, everything, every little piece is different. My word. And, and then from the validation prototypes to the pre-series, we changed maybe 50%. Yeah. And now from the pre-series to production, we changed maybe 20%. So we were playing around with many different uh, architectures and we did all the simulations to see what works best. Yeah. And we decided to not have batteries under the seats so the seats can go completely down. So we do have batteries in the floor here under the feet. So that's the footwells. That's the footwells. These are the seats here yeah. and here. Exactly. Okay. The driver on the right side. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> uh, uh, batteries in the, in the tunnel and in the rear, yeah. uh, in the carbon fiber frame, and uh, lots of modules distributed around. Uh, and what's important here, it's a structural part. So yeah. it increases the structural rigidity of the monocoque. And uh, the battery modules and battery cells are stressed members. So the cells and the modules and all of this weight that you have here is not just carried around, but it also gives additional stiffness to the car, yeah. which is something quite special for this car because it has the biggest uh, torsional stiffness uh, of any car ever made. So uh, we have separate front and rear powertrain. So the front powertrain is two electric motors in the middle with two gearboxes and inverters on top. Yeah. In the rear, you can't see it here now, but it's, it's the gearboxes are in the middle, motors on the sides and inverter on top. Yep. Totally different architecture front and rear because in the rear we have much more power. In the rear we yep. have one megawatt, in the front we have 400 kilowatts. So wow, gosh. For almost 2,000 horsepower together. Why is that? Like the Bugatti Chiron, for example, it has the cooling in the front and in the rear. Yeah. And it has cooling pipes going through the sills of the car. Right. We don't have sills, we have very big doors yeah. um, that open up um, like a, a butter butterfly style uh, door. Why? Because, I mean, we don't have the wheel here. If we had the wheel, you would see how much inward the sill is towards the edge of the wheel. Yeah. Because we wanted to make getting in and out of the car super easy. So if we had the cooling system running on the side here, yeah. you couldn't do that. So that's why we had separate cooling systems front and rear. Yeah. <laughs> Which actually, it's, uh, when you think about that, like, uh, to get easier in and out of the car, you need to have a separate cooling system front and rear. So. And the cool thing when you look at the car, even here in undisguised form, well, where you, if you looked at other hypercars like that, you would see lots of parts from normal cars. Yeah. Here, nothing is carried over from a conventional car. Nothing is carried over from another project. So even stuff like pumps or fans were specifically developed for this car. Seriously, you don't buy anything off the shelf? Nothing. So the suspension parts, uh, the brake system, the, the cooling system, the inverters, the gearbox, the motors, everything is specifically made for this car. I'm driving the incredible, mind-blowingly technological Rimac Nevera. Two motors in the front, two motors in the back, four-wheel drive, 2,360 newton meters of torque, torque vectoring, autonomous driving, high-end audio equipment, comfort. There's no artificial noises. This is, these are the real noises the car makes. That's the way Marte wants it. It's just got more power than it should have, really. I mean, like the throttle response, and I've got it on smooth because I just checked. The throttle response is on smooth. I could put it into aggressive. The suspension has been 
calibrate it so that it's always comfortable, apart from on track mode where it's obviously compromised, it's just there to grip and not roll as much, but it's really a really quite comfortable car. When I got invited over, and I, I'm, I've been very excited about this opportunity, this is rare. Very, very rarely does a, a car company with such exotic, expensive cars um, urge you to take the car out on your own, on the road, take the car out on your own as fast as you can do it over a quarter mile, um, actively encourage you to flick it into drift mode. But that's remote. Let's talk about the design, because I really like the fact that with the air brake down, it's actually quite a, a smooth, simple car yep. in many ways. It's not sort of full of wings and mad winglets. That's on purpose. We, we yeah. don't want to be flamboyant, uh, dictated by trends. We want it to be more uh, timeless and, and driven by function. Yeah. So Adriano is our director of design. He's with me from day one, so he and I worked together for 12 years and he designed the concept one and now yeah. he leads the team that does everything that we do uh, something like 25 i think designers so from the user interface to the buttons to the car to the website to the app on your phone everything it goes through him yeah everything on the car has a function yeah and something in the front is made in that way so that we can have a certain airflow on the side or at the back um, so so everything works together as one piece i was going to say talking of the side the side profile is very interesting because it's got this, I guess it's one of your signature touches, isn't it? Because it was on the original C1. This, 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 this cutout that tapers in and goes like that. It goes throughout the whole car. Yeah. It ends in this piece, which is looks like a tie, yeah. like a bow tie. And uh, the point of that is to show our origins, which is Croatian. Uh, so this uh, tie originates from Croatia. Yeah. Uh, from the 17th century, when uh, Croatian soldiers were fighting alongside uh, French uh, in the Napoleon Wars, yeah. and they were having a scarf tied in a certain way, and the French called it, because they were Croatians, the cravat. Yeah. So the cravat is the bow tie, which is reflected in our cars. The cravat. And these LEDs actually light up when you charge the car, they show the state of charge or your country flag. So they can um, illuminate in Croatia's flags yeah. or um, Italian, whatever you really? choose. Really? Yeah. So seating position wise, actually, I'm very, very comfortable. I can see well over the deck of the car. You've got these two pronounced wheel tubs, which I use to position the car as we're driving through a village. The rear view mirror actually gives me a pretty good rear view, which is not common in supercars, hypercars. This little button on the right here, um, I can press this and I can get different menus through, G-force meter, real-time torque, real-time torque on each corner. Ah, oh, temperatures. Okay, so that's yeah, that's that's low regen. This strange the kind of cones which come out of the dash with the conical double conical rotary controls on. All of this has been done because Marte believes in having physical interesting buttons for the important things. These toggles down here. You know, you've got your fog lights down here, you've got your suspension setting. You've got your windows either side. Physical volume button. Seven speaker audio with a subwoofer. There's a, a six terabyte supercomputer that processes things like the torque vectoring. And it can process six terabytes of data in under an hour. I think it's sensing the wheel slip and all of the behavior, the, the, the throttle position, everything, 50 times a second. 
And whilst all of that is geeky and a lot of people will be confused by it, what you do need to know is that the result is a car that feels pliable. It feels relaxing actually when you want to cruise around in it. It's just knowing that the power you've got in reserve is like no other. It's, it's just like no other. This thing's got built-in cameras so that the owner can put their footage onto YouTube or Instagram, complete with telemetry if they so wish. They can publish their information. And that's the progressive nature of Rimac. They're always thinking about what the, next, what the customer wants next, what a new breed of customer might want. 10 years ago, he set up Rimac. Little did he know that going from tinkering around with a rotten BMW uh, converted to EV in his shed to a company which is contributing to the GDP of Croatia. He's probably the most famous person in Croatia now that Goran Ivanisevic, the tennis player, is a retired, but long retired. He's changing the economic landscape. He's changing almost the, the education system, if, if you want, in Croatia. Because people are actually aspiring to be engineers, software experts. And that's what this car is. It's absolutely loaded with tech. It's alive with tech, but it's also alive with character. I mean, the story of Marte, um, you'll, I'll be doing another feature on that. So stay, stay in touch, uh, subscribe to the channel. But his determination is is seldom seen in life. Having buttons that are specifically made for this car and not out of some other car, yeah. it's so much work. Yeah. And it makes your life so much easier to just <laughs> take that and put it in the car. Of course. Or having Lamborghini does it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, everybody does it. Or having like, uh, you know, the 360 parking assistant or having uh, four airbags and uh, uh, US homologation that's a whole like the difference between EU homologation and US homologation is one car versus 15 cars is it really being crashed that's yeah. the difference it's wow. a huge difference or us having this stronger to braking means we have to have an electro hydraulic brake system with a brake pedal feel simulator which is hundred times more difficult and expensive to develop than a vacuum based uh, or vacuum uh, brake booster which yeah. is like what other hypercars have or having an electric power steering to enable uh, steer by wire for the autonomous driving system yeah. is a hundred times more difficult to implement than uh, with a proper steering wheel than a hydraulic system that you just put in a car and it's okay wow. so you know w we made our life Maybe a little bit too complicated with this, We're trying to take all the boxes, but... You are. <laughs> you really, really are. Yeah. The best thing about it is the adjustability. Yeah. It can really be like a GT and flick of the switch, it's a drift monster. And that is amazing what you've managed to, to achieve with the, the GT comfort ability. A, uh, some luggage space. Yeah, quite a decent one actually. Yeah. For, for such a car. Yeah. But like you say, it can be an animal if you want it to be. It can be a real track car. And the best thing is... With, with some the, good range. With the over-the-air updates, you can endlessly improve it. Yeah. So it can be better and better over time. And we can send the updates to the customers. That has so much potential yeah. to do crazy things. So there we have it, the Nevera. Two million euros worth of car. Some 10 years in the making if you count the C1 and the C2 concepts. A car that can kind of do everything. Jack of all trades, master of all trades. I think one of the most fascinating things about this car is not so much about the way it drives necessarily, but it's how the car has come to be, how it's got to here, and everything that's gone into it. The engineering pornography is, is like I, something I've never seen before. And I think that is worth applauding. Marte and the team here in Croatia, against all odds, have created this. He can retire now if he wanted to, but he's just beginning. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Late Break Show. It's felt very special for me. Um, if you're a subscriber, thank you for subscribing. If you support me through Patreon, thank you very much for that.